Good afternoon, morning, evening or night, ladies and gents, and welcome to Corncast number 21. I'm your host, Alex, joined as always by the legendary Rick and Morty follower himself, James. Good afternoon, morning, evening or night. He doesn't sound happy about that. <laughs> and the, uh, the Halo follower you can hear in the background there. I'm not happy about that. Damn. And Beast, who, I don't know, are you, are you back to being, uh, you know, with your catchphrase and everything? Uh, seemed a bit low last mm. time. Uh, you know, people, people have the option to believe what they want to believe, I mm-hmm. reckon. Mm-hmm. People have the option to believe whatever they want to believe. And with that, yeah. I want to shout out the patrons before we get too deep into this. Head over to our Patreon and have a look at the perks, like the silly name readings that's in the middle of the show. Let's do some housekeeping. <laughs> Dylan Milne says the cast seems to be at peak form when discussing the brutalization of wild animals and i wanted to bring this up because uh reuben you had to clear off for the last section so you missed this comment and i wanted to get your sort of take on it it was a it was a question about (laughs) and you have to bear with me actually while i find it here but it's it's worth it trust me is it another what who what would win yeah um it's more it's a bit more deep than that Actually, I was going to say good because, like, just the what would win those ones, you know, you can't if you want a good answer, you have to go deeper than the question suggests you would have to anyway. But that's why they're good. I'd like it just to be upfront and honest about the depth required, though. I'd like it, you know, for the, the question to demand a bit more, you know, so. When we obviously it was it was a polar bear and a gorilla, <laughs> mm. um, but obviously depending on habitat, depending on environment they are fighting in, that would also well. That's what I liked about well, this so. question is it had pretty explained parameters, which were: Do you reckon a human at peak physical condition could knock out a horse in one punch? Yeah, assuming the horse just stands there and the punch has perfect form, would such yes. a feat be possible? If yes. I, I, then what do you think the largest animal would be that could still get one bombed by a person? <laughs> but okay, Lunch but the thing is, ooh. the reference person here is peak Mike Tyson. Yeah, that's, we settled that's, on Mike Tyson as the, as yeah, the person. Yeah, I think so, because his fists are obviously considered weapons. <laughs> yeah. Like, legally. So, yeah, okay. So a giraffe's or, just or obvious. Even, Ostrich, not obvious. Necessarily, not even necessarily Mike Tyson in his peak. Mike Tyson in in maybe if is there is there an even more peak Mike Tyson? Is there like a mega Mike Tyson? Mm, yeah, that didn't ever exist because it didn't have to. He, was, he wasn't training <laughs> to knock out a horse in one punch. He was training to fight humans and have like stamina and strength for prolonged periods of time. So, so could M Bison beat a, a horse? Or oh, definitely. He doesn't even need to punch it. You know. The muscles on that guy. Mm, I think, I'm trying to think, largest animal. Because, you know, elephant comes to mind, and I'm like, no, elephant, it couldn't. Yeah, we said rhino and elephant is probably a no-go. Yeah. I don't think, I don't even think a hippo. I think there's, I think that they're just too big, like the head yeah. and the skulls are too dense for a human to be able to, like, do that. Um, honestly, I think, I think, I, I maybe, maybe Mike Tyson could if a, if a gorilla just did i don't know gorillas are pretty you look at them, <laughs> gorilla. Like, there is a lot of there's a lot of muscle and and power there i feel like he would break on the silverback skull you know he would break around it so i don't know i feel like gorillas oh, are so sure. human like and they're That's so vulnerable with their brains though yeah are their skulls quite thin you know are they like baby human skulls yeah i don't know <sighs> It's a toughie. Uh, I mean, definitely rhino and elephant and hippo. I agree. You know, those are too big. What about like a I lion? Think, I reckon you could. Uh, I reckon a big human, you know, could definitely knock the fuck out of a shark if it wants to. <laughs> yeah, but no, yeah, we, we actually said that, crocodile. But... Like, why don't we? Why aren't we just basing this on Batman and like Arkham City? You <laughs> yeah. watched him beat the fuck out of a shark. I don't think there's anything that Batman and Arkham City couldn't fight though. <laughs> <So it's just laughs> not <fair>. uh, <sighs> Brian Tanny left a comment about my comment on Daredevil Season 3, saying, Hi boys, today Alex mentioned that he tried Daredevil Season 3 and bailed on it due to it starting right after Defenders. As someone who's watched Season 3 multiple times, I can confidently say Defenders doesn't really matter. It gets vaguely referenced here and there, but it doesn't really affect it. I would definitely say that you should go back to it and give it a try. As in my humble opinion, it's the best season of Daredevil and one of the best seasons of television Netflix has put out. 
Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I might check it out because I remember the fight scenes being quite impressive in in that show, and it was kind of what was keeping me going. But yeah, I had heard that it's good, but <sighs> you know, there's just so much shit, so much shit to keep up with. I find with Daredevil something that actually makes that show worse is that it's in the MCU. Yeah. Yeah, I would prefer it if, if it was standalone. And like, yeah. he would do better to be in like the John Wick universe or something, because <laughs> then they could just have him, <laughs> you know, really, really hurt people, which is what we all want to see. Uh, but it has to be in baby Marvel world. Yeah, I'll, I'll think about it. Maybe if I watch like one of the fight scenes from it on YouTube, and if it's good enough, then maybe I'll I'll consider it. But Kaz said i jokingly commented about jim's dark souls gameplay because i knew he was doing stuff for the podcast didn't expect to be on the cast lol thanks for the shock edit i play similarly to the whole shelling thing usually i'm not good at the series but i love the dual great swords i've never played it so i don't know what he's talking about but that sounded like dark souls 3 it sounded like dark souls 3 yeah oh Okay. Yeah. And wait, what was? Could you duel with great swords in Dark Souls too? What was it called? One. Yeah, you could. Yeah. Oh, that's what Dark Souls One. No, you can't in Dark Souls One, can you? Well, I mean, you could, but I mean, it wasn't really. You know, you didn't use the other one as a sword, really, did you? It wasn't the same. It wasn't. Uh... Yeah, it it was just bad to yeah. do that sort of shit. And we can round this uh, section off with a comment from James Stanley, who said, I kind of toyed with the idea of Mass Effect bouncing back from the brink for some time, mainly because there hasn't been much of a serious attempt by other developers to occupy the big, sprawling space opera niche that's been left half vacant. I don't know if this will change the Jar Boy's mind about it, but I read somewhere that the development team, back from when the series was still strong, will be returning for this new game. On a side note, what does Jar think of Bioware's other big franchise, Dragon Age, which incidentally also had a teaser at the Game Awards? So, yeah, I'm still going to have to be proven on the Mass Effect thing, because I think just under EA, they just don't seem to give the teams the time and creative energy they need. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure if like that original Mass Effect 3 team was just given more time and energy, that game could have come together in a better way. But and as far as Dragon Age is concerned, I've, I've just never cared about it. I, I just don't care about Dragon Age. I've tried it on numerous occasions. I tried Dragon Age 2 when that came out, and I tried Dragon Age Inquisition as well. I was really like, yeah, 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 and I played it, and I was like, this is boring. I don't <laughs> like it. I've, uh, well, Dragon Age 2 is like the uh, black sheep. It's like the one everyone knows is, is fucking garbage. Would you, yeah, but do you remember I've, when it came out, there was like the controversy that like every dungeon was like a, like a reskin of the same basic layout or something like that? There was a lot. There was a lot of um, like controversy. Over it was like game. rushed, wasn't it? Yeah, that's because that's in the time where it was just like, oh, Bioware, why don't you just do everything? So everything was just shit, basically. But I've uh, I've downloaded uh, Dragon Age Origins from EA, so I'll probably give that a shot. In I played Inquisition as well, but I just couldn't get into it. It just hasn't got that kind of like Lord of the Rings charm mm. that gets you hooked. Yeah, but like Skyrim has that charm, like a, that kind of charm, but I just yeah. don't get anything. It just yeah, it just seemed really generic to me. Whereas Mass yeah. Effect was so they just put so much thought into that well, that Skyrim universe. Skyrim at least had this really sort of wonderful atmosphere that you, you can definitely give Skyrim that. Well, you know, when you don't w witness a bug happening, you know, you're quite immersed. But there's there was something about Dragon Age Inquisition that it just I don't know. It just sort of felt. I mean, it wasn't very fun to play. Was one of the main things where I was just I don't want to play this. I'm just sort of holding one button, and the world isn't really hooking me at all. I'm just not interested in the presentation. It was ages ago though, so I don't know. I'm probably just talking out my ass. Uh, yeah, the same as you guys. I, I'm not crazy about that world. Nothing about it has like drawn me in at all. So, and I normally prefer like fantasy to sci-fi, but. Yeah, it's one of those things, like an uncanny thing you just can't put your finger on. It's like, it's... I've got my fantasy, you know? <laughs> I don't yeah. really like that one, so I don't care. Did it come out after The Witcher as well, Inquisition? Uh, yes, I yes, believe it so. Did, it did. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah, and it just didn't, like, compare to that. Because I remember that, uh, that Dragon Age game, didn't it win, like, Game of the Year or something? It must have been, like, a pretty slow year, or I don't know. Yeah, it got like really good reviews and stuff. Mm -hmm. But there must yeah, be something it to it. It's just... Yeah, I, I could sort of tell looking at it, like, yeah, I see why people like this, and I want to, but I don't. <laughs> what about this idea of the uh, original development team coming back and 
giving Emmy another go. Mm, mm, it's just a, okay, prove it then. In the comment, he he said, I haven't actually checked up on this, that the development team back from when Mass Effect was um, good is coming back for this new one. I but. read that some of them are coming back. I'm not, you know, it, it's sort of unheard of in the industry to just rehire a whole team. You know, most people have like moved on. You know, they don't care. Like, you know, it's like, yeah, that was a time in my life. I now work for a different company. Though. And also, like, the face of it was Casey Hudson for the longest time, and he just he's left gone. again. Well, so. My my thing when when people say about teams, the when you think of teams, the most important people to a game being similar to the old games is the creative heads. Think, you know, Modern Warfare Two, Respawn Entertainment. The the main people from there are in Respawn, hence why Titanfall is good. If if Casey Hudson's not or any of the major people from Mass Effect Two or one aren't coming back, then I wouldn't say it's the same team. It's not going to be the same because the creatives aren't there. I guess what you want is someone who knows what they want and they know how to get what they want out of their team. And and you have to hope that that aligns with what players want, which is, well, you know, I mean, the guy that was in charge of Halo 5 knew what he wanted and no one else wanted it, though. <laughs> so, I have no hope. Yeah, it's just one more say, OK, prove it then. Prove that you're worth delving back into. So it's happened, guys. Uh, there's apparently a new strain of of COVID that's kind of wreaking havoc on the UK at the moment. As of today, recording this, uh, Bojo came out and gave his profound speech saying how Tier 4 is being implemented in London and other places in the UK. It's pretty serious stuff. It's a huge fucking downer, obviously. Right before Christmas, he's like, Yeah, we're changing the uh, rules of Sully. Yeah, it just sucks. Imagine if they'd had the foresight to do this a couple of weeks ago so that people could see each other at Christmas. Do you know what wasn't worth it? That, like, three months we just had of just normal life? Why did we have that? I'm sick of it just being re reactive instead of preventative in any way, you know? It's like, Jesus Christ, it's since so much... Just make a decision already. Like, it almost would have been better if we just hadn't locked down if you're going to do it like this. You know, so yeah. it's just half measures all the time. Yeah, that's the thing. And um, a virus is more likely to mutate like it has if it goes through more people. So, yeah. I mean, this is even something you can blame the government for. But they didn't. The, London should have there's been. There's no foresight. London should have been stricter this whole time and over these yeah. the, the, over December, because obviously there's been it's been spreading like crazy because of this. All the shoppers It's Christmas shopping season. Which they wanted to encourage and massage that, so the, you know, they're getting some income. But now we got to deal with this. So. So like, I don't see this ending. Like March is going to be the same. I can't see this ending for at least like till August next year. Well, yeah, and apparently it's a thing where because now the vaccine is out there, a lot of people feel like, oh, I guess it's sort of done then, eh? So they're just yeah. kind of returning back and not really giving a shit anymore, even though it's, it takes a lot of time to distribute this kind of shit. Well, and for it to even make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think maybe some people seem to see a vaccine as being, well, if you've got it, they can just inject that and it will fix it. And it's like, that's not how it works. If you've already got it <laughs> and it's mm. already doing something, you've already got it, man. That's it. It's not just a magic. Uh, it's not like an antidote. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, sorry. We just had to address uh, some mic difficulties on Discord or whatever. But yeah, I was just saying about it's not an antidote. It's it's, it's, it's going to take a while. They should, um, they should put it in the water. And then use the microwave device from Batman Begins and um, magic. Or like in Mass Effect with the genophage. Uh, yeah, that, yeah. I don't want Bill Gates doing the genophage. <laughs> <laughs> they already are, you idiots. Have you not been following the bloody media? Have you not seen that England is nothing more than a test ground for this vaccine that hasn't been tested or proven? It's we just are just like guinea pigs. <laughs> James. Even though thalidomide isn't a vaccine derived from yeah. a pre-existing vi virus. It was just a chemical mixture, I, I guess, it would be the term. James, you said the other night you had some some angry, passionate thing you were going to talk about. Oh, no, that was me trying to annoy Ruben and Jim. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why would that annoy I just annoy saw it and I was like, I, I saw it and I was like, well, I guess I won't see any of that. I'll be able to respond because I'll be at work tomorrow. So I just... <laughs> I just thought it was no, like, okay, it's just, I, I have recently I have been playing Titanfall 2 and it uh, is basically Modern Warfare 2 and that is a good thing and a bad thing 
because every the problem mad is you're addicted or something. No, no, is in like the there's fucking dodgy connection. It's just Modern Warfare Two, Ben. When, when there was lag in that game, it's just like that in Titanfall, which isn't really acceptable nowadays. Like that kind oh, of. Oh, does it not have lag. dedicated servers? EAP two P, man. EAP two P. Oh, that's a shame. And then it's just melee. Melee's bullshit. Oh uh, yeah, I hate like the fucking melee in it as well. It makes no sense. You, it, the whole game's about movement, but as soon as you get in a room, it's just spam melee and you kill them instantly. It's just COD Modern Warfare 2. Yeah, no, but it's still I... a very good game, and if you can play it, you definitely should. If not for the multiplayer, for the fantastic single player. Yes. Yeah. And it's it's like you're, you're so used to Apex Legends and its fluid movement. Yeah. And then you play Titanfall, and it's weird to get used to, but there's a lot more there. Yeah. I did wonder, like, he's not said anything. We've been yeah. talking about Titanfall for a good few seconds. <laughs> Fuck. This is this is this is this is the curse cast. Sorry, might as well wait off. This it is, is the, the curse one. one. He's back. back I guess. Hello. What? <laughs> okay, this this is just the curse one then, I guess. We just gotta embrace yes. it. Yeah. We're talking okay. about Titanfall, Jim. Yeah, yeah. no, because when you weren't saying anything, I was like, What? <laughs> Sure, no, surely he's got some time. James James said, um, I'm playing Titanfall two and then everyone went silent. And then I said, that pisses me off. And then <laughs> the Discord noise happened. I said the single player was good. Has James, uh, have you played any of the single player yet? Oh, no. Has he gone now? No fucking way, James. <laughs> That's why he's got, like, really consistent internet. There was a no. Oh, there, right, yeah. So. Yeah, he's back. <laughs> he, he did just leave. Okay, yeah, yeah. He was getting his drink, hey. yeah. Oh, I should light a fire up my ass. <laughs> Why? Um, because it makes the room smell nice. I mean, if you Candles. guys are done with Titanfall, there is some pretty epic gaming news with the whole the cyberpunk th thing removed from PlayStation entirely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't believe yeah, I'm, that. Yeah, I'm upset about that. Why? Um, because cause cyberpunk does not deserve all of the hate it is getting. It is an excessive amount of hate born from an excessive level of hype. Yeah. I don't think it's their fault. I mean, they marketed the game well. And then everyone just went nuts of it. For some reason, people were watching like pre-rendered E3 trailers and being like, "That's what the game looks like. Those are the graphics. Those are Keanu Reeves graphics." And it's like, "No, that's not. That's not what the fucking game's gonna look like. You fucking idiot." Was the was it? Is it not the concern that they just never showed gameplay of it on like? Well, yeah, there models? was obviously the Xbox One and PS4 issue, but just then there are other people who seem to take issue just with the game. You know, even when they're playing it on on a PC and it's like running and stuff, and I don't know, there are a whole lot of things, and it's it's just, it's difficult to talk about because it's obviously caught up in the more controversial aspects, which are old gen. It's basically uh, an, an like an, a nightmare situation for a game developer when no one's actually really talking about the game itself, and it's just about mm -hmm. the the meta story of it now. Have you played any more? Uh... I think Sony has done the right thing before we talk about the actual game. I I yeah. am pretty fucking tired of games being released unfinished. So yeah. like developers need to have some sort of penalty, you know, some sort of come up because it is bullshit. Like Im imagine you're a dude you you just play games on your PS4 and like you've been excited for Cyberpunk for fucking 8 years mm -hmm. and then it comes out and it it looks like a PS1 game. Yeah, yeah, it's that, pretty that bad. That shit ain't cool. When you've seen all the f the stuff they've shown off, you expect there to be some consistency across all platforms. To some yeah, extent. it's it's a tiring standard now because it's like, what? When is the best time to play a game? Like just a year after it's out. Like, what's even the point of release dates anymore? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, maybe they should have done something if they really needed to release the game. Release them. Uh, release it on platforms at different times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. What needs to happen? What needs to happen is gamers need to change. Gamers need to stop expecting the best. They need to stop companies... hyping, and or companies need to stop behaving like shitters. Well, yeah, they, so they feed each other. Less. Yeah, they do. Gamers, gamers have no patience. So what happens is the companies crunch their whole team and release a subpar po per eh, product. Crunch time's bad, but yeah. at the end of the day, why? If you know a game's going to be a buggy mess, why would you then buy it on day one to then complain that it's a mess when you could just not do that? I mean, <laughs> I'd already bought my code last December, so like you know, 
I was committed. I know, I, I, I know we all like games and we want to play games, but we we know the gaming industry is fucked. We can't blame anyone but ourselves for going into it and knowing it's fucked and complaining well, it's I, fucked. It's just frustrating from the aspect of like the people who design the game, the people who make it day to day, are the ones who are kind of fucked the most by it because then it comes down to these like business decisions and it's all about the bottom line and they've got to release in certain quarters of the year and that just kind of throws them under the bus and makes them look really bad when they would know the state the game is in, but... It just becomes an uncontrollable beast at some point. The problem is capitalism. Yeah, but you're making a product that needs to be sold and... <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really exist without capitalism. No, it does. Yeah. In the perfect socialist utopia, you'd get these games for free <laughs> and they would work because the team would have the right amount of hours to develop it. And no one would have any wages and then the board. government would directly control almost everything about our lives. Yeah, but the government would be good people. I mean, which they do already do, game. kind of, but, you know. Yeah, the key word there was the perfect, which is difficult to achieve in reality. Yeah, no, um, but I just think crunch is bad and the gaming industry needs to change. But until... Well, the, the I don't know why changes, it's... I don't know uh, the, the crunch thing, like, where I really stand on it, because I, I don't know in what creative field where well, crunch is not kind of innate. I, I read something interesting, which was like, okay, look, okay, so Crunch, obviously, let's say they enjoy their job and everyone stays for an extra two hours every night. That equates to an extra, an additional two weeks across a whole year or whatever of development. And then, but it was unrecorded time. So then it appears to the publisher and the heads of the studio, oh, we made this game in this time. So then they have even bigger expectations for the next game. But of course, those people were already working an extra two hours every night because they like their jobs. Um, but it's impossible to keep that level of growth going because yeah, but obviously each like, time they'll be expecting more and more and without knowing that they can't. Yeah, is it a case of people are being forced or like peer pressured, I guess? I guess there's, it's like a work culture it's, thing. The, there's it's there's more than the culture, peer pressure yeah. than meets the eye. They, they hire these contractors and like your entire career is fucked if you refuse to crunch. But at the same time, I don't understand how you could get a game like, like Red Dead 2 for example, without just committing your lives to it. Like, it's, it's just ridiculous the amount of work that is required to create it's something like that. You could say, like, yeah, what if they'd been given an extra year to make it? But then there's a question of, but without the additional pressure, would they, would the people, like, would they have made that game? I don't know. I mean, the thing is, films, really, really good films get made without necessarily crunch. It's just like, yeah, look, this is scheduled to happen this way. It's we'll like, work to the schedule. And, and we'll it's make like a, very a creative good wavelength, too. Like, if, it, if it, I'm sure the energy on the set of like a Tarantino film is a bit different to like that Monster Hunter movie that's coming out. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. people are going to be more keen when it is a project like your Red Deads or your. You know, just I, I working with the tours or whatever. The issue as well, though, is compensation, where these these contracted people that don't even have, like, a permanent position in the, the development Yeah, team, that's a problem. And well, yeah. they're not paid overtime. They're, they're paid their, like, contracted it's like sal sal their salary. salary. Yeah, and even if they do end up working 90 hours in a week, they get no extra. But they won't have a job. If they don't do it, this, yeah, that's a this is a huge issue across multiple industries. Is like yeah. the gig economy, they are not protected in any way, and you're just expected to say yes or else, well, you know, have no money, idiot, ha ha, lol. Yeah, it's this, it's it's the problem with the games industry at the moment, where they they constantly need this growth, so like somebody has to get fucked. The corp expect it, but gamers expect these blockbuster games every year. They expect these Red Deads, these fucking cyberpunks, they expect them like within a two year span. And that is impossible. Gamers need to change. You can't change the, the execs unless you ch we change ourselves. Because they're not going to do shit at all. Cause they're but, do yeah, it's, money. It's, you can't just blame gamers though, you know? Yeah, it's, you can't put it all in the, can, the though, lap of the people. The gamers are fucking awful. Yeah, I've got my problem with like gamers, like a certain type of gamers, but like there's so many of them. It's not just. A gamer problem like it's, it's supply it's demand true. and the demand is so high they they force in the supply like cod uh, does cod would cod have crunch yeah because it's just it's yeah, just uh, yeah. yeah i think every game does if you have Especially a deadline when they had like yeah they had like one year to make a game oh yeah it's, it's a problem in, in just lots of places is, is this this you know very precarious employment situations that lots of people are faced with 
like I'm trying to think. Yeah, earlier on this year, there was a strike among all the a lot, a lot of lecturers and academics in a certain union in this country. I don't remember which one. Um, and I remember talking talking to people about that, and they were like, "Well, do you think they, you know, do you think they need it? Do you think they need more pay or whatever? Yeah, you know, aren't lecturers paid a lot?" And it's like, "Well, <laughs> actually, lots of them are, are just these. Um, they're just brought in. They never. They don't even a, a full contract by a college. Yeah. It's just look, you're going to do this. Uh, you're going to come in when we need you." That's it. So yeah, I think I think they could do with it being better. It's it's like perception. Yeah, maybe that's what needs to change. Is is players or gamers need to try and need to understand it better. There needs to be a, a fuller perception of the reality of where the product they consume is coming from. Which is tough How when is coming to the them. way it's discussed is always just like over the top headlines. You yeah, know? Kotaku mm-hmm. just spewing some fucking dog shit. IGN being like, well. And then, you know, <laughs> everyone moves on. Any other uh, things you want to bring up that we've been uh, doing ship, before? Ship, 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 ship. We head off into the, the midsection. Mm. Oh, I'm, I'm okay. I see power when I see her midsection. I watched the uh, Pong Krell arc, which was pretty good. <clears throat> Pong Krell arc? Shout out to the Pong Krell arc. Um, Shut the fuck up. Some, someone in the comments uh, <laughs> suggested that one, and it was worth checking out. <laughs> Pong oh, <my> Krell. <laughs> don't don't, don't ask. Him. Oh, don't okay. engage yeah. it. It's a Dexter Jetster like Jedi. <laughs> yeah, he's got oh my two god. double lightsabers. Yeah. Oh my god. That's hey, how, he's voiced. He's voiced by uh, the yeah, guy Lee. from The Walking Dead. Yeah, he's Lee, Lee from, from The Walking, Walking Dead. Dead. Oh yeah. And it's just about clones. Um, he's like a really weird. He's like a general, and the clones are like getting these weird commands from him, and they're like t- testing their faith, you know, and their allegiance to the the authority. Damn, dude, Pong Damn, Crow. That's, that's such a Star Wars name. <laughs> Did you find it quite hard to find him cool because of? No, I can't really go into any detail without spoiling it, you know, because I'd recommend people check it out for themselves. Can you say? Can you say if he is cool? He's a cool character, yeah. Is he cooler than Dex the Jetster? No. Okay. That's all I needed to know. Oh, there's five beans and there are five rice. Five rice? Yeah, five beans. Five rice. What if there... Let's say hypothetically, if there were to be more rice... Rices. And six so. beans, seven rice. No, that's just disgusting. <laughs> no, what I'm going to say Jesus Christ. is uh, Call of Duty Black Ops for the Xbox 360 is actually one of the best first person shooters. No, shit. I just. I actually did watch something important that needs to be shit. mentioned. That being. Um, no Cats and Dogs. I watched it. Oh, God. <sighs> it's there on Why? Netflix. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. And it's needed something to kill like an hour. It's so short, and it's it's pretty fucked up. It's a fucked up film. Dogs are so. Do you remember the bit where there's like a telephone booth right at the start? The telephone booth dog that's all tiny (laughs) or something. It comes out of the ground in a little glass. Yeah, in the little garbage bin thing. Yeah, Yeah. the bin. That's the one. (laughs) And Alec Baldwin's Uh. in it. (laughs) Toby Maguire voices a beagle. How do you guys feel about the decision of making the dogs the good guys and the cats the bad guys? I I think it's. The deeply white. sexist in uh, yeah. the same way that it's always dogs are the men and cats are the women. Mm. No, because cats attack you, dogs don't. Mm, if if a true. dog attacks you, you're a lot worse off, trust me. Yeah, like if a cat attacks you, it's just like, ow. Yeah. Yeah, Why'd you do no, that? Not in James' case. Then you hurl it a million miles because it's a cat and you can do that. No, but like cats are the one... The general perception is cats are more mischievous than dogs. That, that's a fact. We all know that. So why that makes sense for that movie? Okay. Cats attack you when you give them food. Dogs also attack you when no, you give don't. them food. What yeah, are no, you talking don't. about? Neither people of those like, things. Go, go, those go, go, things. Go, go, cats cat cats take me by surprise. You <laughs> 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 don't understand. I am a cat. Owner. Gonna, they're going to complain. Oh, I've got scratches constantly because my cat like attacks me. Do you get how often has Billy attacked you? Uh, I've received scratches like twice that's fucking bullshit maybe three times but cats I've are been... tiny and it doesn't matter dogs are, can also be tiny i've been scratched as many times by argy as i have been for yeah 
You know, he's done more damage to me than Billy has. Argy, Argy, That's possibly Argy, an exposure thing as well. Of course, so. Argy's going to scratch you. He's void no, rage. You know, if Argy was in the Cats and Dogs movies, he'd be like the turncoat dog who was actually <laughs> working with the cats. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he would. But what would Pays be? She would be working for the cats, but by accident. No, she'd be the dog in the opening scene that gets, like, killed or something. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Yeah, that's dark. Mm. That's it's just, it's just like the Paisley. truth. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a bit of, like, a dodgy, like, early 2000s, like, kind of casual racism thing with the weird, like, ninja cats. Oh, they're and Asian. Like, yeah, I was going to say, yeah. though, aren't they ninja cats? Yeah, and they drop <laughs> out of, like, the, like, kamikaze-type planes with the, like, oh, accents. And they're, like, go, doing all the, <laughs> hey, oh, yeah, all this shit. <laughs> What's it's fucking... I'm amazed. I really expected Netflix to have, like, edited hey, that bit out, but... They didn't. Do you know what we should do? Um, well, watch Revenge of Kitty Galore next. <laughs> I've watched that. Yeah. I, I went <laughs> to the cinema on... Um, I went to the cinema with one of our school friends. <laughs> just watched it on like a Saturday because we just went through this phase of doing that. Just like, what's in the, what's in the cinema right now? I don't know. Okay, let's go. We just Kitty watched Galore? it was there. How was it? And that was on once. It was so fucking bad. <laughs> yeah, because they got rid of Tobey Maguire. No, because his, his arc is completed in that first movie, Jim. It's perfectly wrapped up. Because it ends with uh, Alec Baldwin saying, he would have been a great spy. What, so the character isn't in the second one? No, I don't think so. Is... It's like a different... I'm sh I think Alec uh -huh. Baldwin comes back. And I, <laughs> I was looking at the, um, the like red carpet pictures from the... <laughs> premiere of uh, Revenge of Kitty Galore. It's some pretty awful shit. <laughs> we'll be back after these messages. These nuts. <laughs> Life can be a dick sometimes, so get your dick from out your hand. And don't be a dick. Wear a dick. Dig the Head t-shirts available now. Check the description below. Yeah, you know, I found that. I was in the garage the other day and I found that fucking um, body pillow. So perverted. <laughs> so he's just a naked what cartoon one? character. You said you'd give me the pillow but without the casing on it. <laughs> like, um, I you know, said... with the the wolf girl on it. Oh, holo. Yeah. <laughs> it's like one side she's naked and the other side she's got some clothing on. Or like a nighty. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> I would actually have the pillow though, just just the pillow. But you need a case for it. I suppose you can get one yeah. off Amazon or something. Yeah, you just get a blank case. But it's my so mum straight up had one, like just a just a, a long. Yeah, they're supposed to be good for you. Anyone even really like new? Yeah, it's meant to put your leg up on it. It's like good for your spine. Yeah, it's good for like um, RLS. But it's RLS just R and L. It's just no, the the you. like texture of the the I'm gonna call it a sleeve that you put over it. That's like clearly like designed for cum to like easily yeah, no, be wiped it off it no it is it's, it's so a, disgusting it's a cummy it's got like, yeah it's like got a sheen to it <laughs> jim you back i heard you farting i i spoke as well actually <laughs> all right <laughs> <laughs> all right i would like to say thank you to crusty kamikaze I'm going to release my warm load inside a can of Coke and then drink it. <laughs> Argy, they don't sell poo at Sainsbury's. You can have something else. Tonight, Doug Walker joins The Hunt, a.k.a. I doubt you could even imagine it. I mean, is that, is that an... Uh, I don't know that reference. Doom Eternal is the best game ever made. Review the caretakers everywhere at the end of time 6.5. This guy album. really wants us to listen to that. I've got the girl of your dreams essing my D. Open bracket, styling my do. Close bracket. Onion creature. Lovely monkey. Harriet Broadley. David, aka Review Tech Wallace and Gromit, and the curse of the curse of the curse of the piss of dick poo for you. Ugh, fine, I guess you are my little piss of dick. Come here. I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Caracals, carousels, carachels, I don't know how you pronounce it. A cool yaha, I'm a pirate, yaha. Alas, poor pisser dick. I knew him, Argy. <laughs> a fellow of infinite pisser, of most excellent dick, aka Review Tech Denmark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Jar Jar using the puma misa no have a boomer taking this one. Woo woo woo, <laughs> aka Review Tech. 
Zix. I'm the predator of the cringic that is hiding. Crazy goblins, crazy, crazy, crazy goblins, aka Wavid Dollis. <laughs> the dupster, aka the crazy cock clamp comfort crab. My ancestors are smiling at me, David Wallace. Can you say the same? Affirmative. It's the winter contingency. May God help us all. Yarl Balgruff's receding bumhole made me confess that I only <laughs> shit in alphabetical order, aka Review to USA's Hyman collection. Mm. Out of the damn way, aka Review Tech Blackwater, ma 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 mini rants, begging your pardon, <laughs> Alpha Nine, live at Kazingo Boulevard of unbuilt tanks. Uh, I'm out of ammo. The Bush Bush, KSI, please stop wearing my mother's wedding dress. Import three d- guest, Wang Packer, the premium toys, <laughs> aka Review Tech. Wait, where's David Wallace? Did he unsubscribe from us? This is breaking my heart. Duh. If Jar doesn't watch Ninjago soon. I'm off the cast, a.k.a. Oh my, oh my, I have found you, ninja. Don't you run from me, (laughs) little ninja. It really is special juice. Quick, to the dandelions. Let's have a bit, mate. Oh no, you don't. A self-fulfilling cycle of review techimism. (laughs) (laughs) Gilbert the awesome one. Review tech delta halo. Beware, the enemy is preparing ghost grunts, aka James's tank channel, but he only builds gun gooses. (laughs) Nate minifigs. Check me out on Instagram. James, I can suck well. (laughs) Squidward tennis balls. Big muscles TV. Zero one one IE two. Mr. Cheesy bot sits that crunch on its head 1000. Thanks to Kanye's workout plan, I'm the envy of all my friends. See, I pulled me a baller, man, and I ain't got, and I ain't got to work out of this mall again. I am ordering you to surrender that fillet o fish. Give me that fish. Man, I wish I was Alex's manscaped product, aka Reuben pooping ah that rhymes James get over here and suck me off the ultimate Max Rebo fan aka typical golden pussy enjoyer <laughs> Cobalt Rad all the Patreon names appearing in Adam and Ralph's videos <laughs> suck on these suck on these please I will not stand idly by while a dragon burns my hold and slaughters my people I am PewDiePie I am Mr. Beast <laughs> I am uh, uh, I am Markiplier I am Jacksepticeye. I am Sky <laughs> Does Minecraft. Drain my cock, Johnson. A new hand touches the beacon. Listen, hear me in a bay. A foul darkness has seeped into my temple. A darkness that you that you will destroy. Return my beacon to Mount Kilgreef, and I'll I will make you the instrument of my cleansing hand. <laughs> Cortana, make me when we need to clap them dummy thick blue bum cheeks to break a forward until dawn. <laughs> my ancestors are smiling at me with you, Tech Tamriel. Can you say the same? Red Corsa rip two bags in the wallet. Mr. Bread Funny, ha ha, rip Young King <laughs> Daventry, big doinks in Britain, <laughs> double detached bungalow. UFC number three ranked featherweight contender Zabib Mago Medishi Sharipov. <laughs> Pakistan names are actually impossible to pronounce. Whether we wanted it or not, <laughs> we've stepped into a war with a cabal on Mars, so let's get to taking out their command one by one. Blade Runner 277. Oh, ch- chimpanzee that. Proki. Um, can you. Can we. Fuck, why is this name so hard? Um, kaka kaka kaka, can we just move on, damn it? You will not take David Wallace from me. Your anger and your lust for patrons has have already done that. <laughs> James, I cannot believe you, you yelled the W word in anger while driving on the magic roundabout, AK Review Tech James is gay. I destroyed a kangaroo and I would do it again, motherfucker. AKA <laughs> Review Tech Perth, Australia. Wise Duffy. Doog Wanker and the Nostalgia Quinjick. Jack Tom Fudging Armstrong. Do you get to the Swindon district very often? Oh, what am I saying? Of course you don't, you fucking minger. Hi, honey. I'm home. Cosmic Mapping. <laughs> Bart Simpson, aka Shooey Gooey, Chewy Moody Dooey, Clooby Flooby Mayor Dewey Pooey. Shampoo for my real friends, will poo for my sham friends. J Sainsbury's PLC, trading as Sainsbury's, is the largest chain of supermarkets in the UK. Aaron Kavana, some may call this junk me, I call them David Wallace. Unge my clunge of James 20 inch Reamy Hut Jr. Or you, how are you gonna bang all I wanna know? How are you gonna bang? You're going mad, but how are you gonna dang? you're going on mad but how you t noble double doddle michael man 2000 thank you to steven is human connor tarda butter me up some porn on the cob david wallace as yaddle's red lingerie shone in the moonlight the door (laughs) the door creaked open (laughs) to his figure joe found himself for once not angry (laughs) katia fucking manigan and wait where's david wallace did he unsubscribe from us 
This is breaking my heart, David, please. I pay for this tier just to let that user know that David Wallace is fine. Please change your name, you fucking smeg lord. <laughs> Keep the names in the middle section. It's like a palate cleanser for me. Also, or play divided in two parts with intermission. Thomas Martin. Evan Pierce. What's that class rep, James? You want to start a pegging club and be the first one to hit the pleasure <laughs> bus? Quahog Police Department supports gamers. Quebec Films. Chris Warren. Stinker. Aura. Cool Dip Chip. Keck Flexington. Numa Numa Banana. Ben. Fartbag. George Kenwood Parker. Dragonborn. Was it your ma or pa that was the dragon? Fiddle. Dream Awful 2142. Dad, I don't want to be in your gang. You're no son of mine. That's my son. <laughs> Retro Raggy. Raimi is going Reese of Roy. Fiono Gorman. Wet Anal. Tomcat. David Wallace. Ethan Height. Crapper and Farter. 12 Triple H. 12 8 Gya. Fwani. <laughs> Sir Capsalot. Plin Plin Plon on the Gwyn's theme bon. <laughs> Review Tech Royal Holloway. Ack Zero Light underscore. The normal patron, aka the amazing bulk stock footage satellite sex scene. <laughs> Sam Die Hardman here. Have you subbed to Jar Media? Gabriel Ledge. Danny G Base Lord. Review Tech Grips Dividosa. Very well, then touch the pisser dick within me. Take <laughs> nourishment from these sovereignless dibbies. AKA Wraith from Apex Legends. Married you to curated the Death St Stranding soundtrack, AKA Die Very Hard Man. Check out Nate's minifigs <laughs> on Instagram. Dwayne, Dwayne the, Dwayne the Rock Johnson, Rock Johnson the Rock, Dwayne the, Dwayne the, Dwayne, Rock Johnson, Rock Johnson, Ferdia Clayman. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Buckley, aka Review Tech Swindon, aka paid twenty eight dollars laugh at my name. Yaddle Sex, patrolling the Mohave will almost make you. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> uh, he wasn't sure if that was Jim or James. <laughs> Do you know now? Oh, Mojave, yeah. yeah. Patrolling the Mojave almost makes you wish for a nuclear winter. Sam, I tried being pissedick once worst five minutes of my life. I challenge you to League of Legends top lane. If you use Aatrox, you're a pussy. Adam Johnston, Tom Buis, Juan Hernandez, Jam. Shout out to all the other patron creators confused by these names. Joel Stewart, Rubens Moldovan Sun, Loggy Bear, James's Jizzer Jick, Connie Reed, Jake White. Big whoops. Angry Joe actually loves Innocenti bean smoothies. Gremblo. Ollie Miles. Big Cheese. Kuta Panda. 1100010. B. Canada Stone. Justice for Fallout 76. Just kidding. Fuck that game. AKA Review Tech Goatsy Dimension. Local units. All units. Randy Ruins Patreon. Pip. Pop. Poi. <laughs> fucking cry. Oh. Don't run from me. Katia fucking Manigan. And David Wallace. Thanks for the support. You're out there, James. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck, dude. <laughs> I don't know why it tickles you so much when I fuck up uh, names of these places. I didn't expect <laughs> He's actually like, it's genuine. Like, it really yeah. did. Because <laughs> like, the last time. I an element was put on. Like, it's because know. it's to do with uh, Fallout New Vegas. The euphoria of even hearing something oh, acknowledged yeah. that game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holy fuck. I had to mute my mic. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I didn't expect it. It just smacked me right in the face. What did I say? Mojave? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mohave, I think. Mohave, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the giggler can intro part two. James, you, you can intro part two, can't you? Go on, giggle um, boy. Good afternoon, morning, evening, or night. <laughs> Thank you. This is part two of the Jar Media podcast where we'll answer questions on the Jar Media Reddit. If you want to answer a question, please go on and look at the thread at the top that has been fixed. It's been fixed. Yeah, they've been they've been on the subreddit, changing the background and everything. It's stuff that's way out of my league, but it's awesome. They they finally fixed that that um that thread <laughs> from like two years ago. Well, what would happen is like just random. I would delete it every now and again, but one would just stay there, and I was like, well, I don't really understand Reddit, so I'm not gonna. Someone did something and fixed it. They changed the code. Yes. They hacked the formula. They Mr. Roboted it. Andrew Date is going to start us off. What are you mingers watching this Christmas? Um, probably a Seth Rogen movie. Which one? A Ted Christmas two. one. The British Ted one. Ted one is a Christmas movie. He's not in. Really? He's not. Seth Rogen oh. isn't in Ted, is he? Oh, did he say Seth? Sorry. When oh, James yeah. says Seth, my brain just like your go-to Seth is Rick Fallon, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Understandable. I vote we watch. Uh, Death Stranding cutscenes edited together on YouTube. <laughs> How long is that though? Surely that's like the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Uh, oh, no, it's a couple it, of years. A couple of it might be longer. Years. Yeah, are you googling it? How fucking long is it? Well, it's 
the Lord of the Rings trilogy is nine hours, right? Um, the extendeds are longer, but yeah, about nine hours for the normal ones. Yeah, I want to say the Death Stranding, um, all cutscenes is closer to like fourteen hours. <laughs> <laughs> and then we Might should watch be. Metal Gear Solid 4 like straight after and then maybe Final Fantasy 13 all cutscenes edited together <laughs> yeah I've got one here um, all cutscenes and in-game dialogues is 12 oh, hours Jesus Christ yeah I don't know I don't really watch things on Christmas it's... yeah you might watch Home Alone or something like some point next week I don't know yeah, I like nights, so like fuck. I could the as soon as Home Alone comes on, I just want Christmas to be over. I can't stand those movies. Why what oh. do you have against Home Alone? Okay. I don't know. There's something about them that just doesn't sit right with me. Is it when he shaves and then he slaps his face and goes Whoa! Is it because he don't know the idea of a young of a child alone at home? No, it's just like I don't know, there's those movies they're just depressing. They just depress me. <laughs> Yeah. I, can't I, suppose, like, I mean, the, the setup is the actually like that. surprisingly dark. <laughs> yeah, it is. I was thinking about that. They, they're going to have their whole Christmas ruined and their lives potentially, like, we're going to be really fucked up by it. But their little boy who's on his own prevents it. It's not really very nice, is it? Yeah, and through his own hardiness that he's had to build up over the years from being ignored, manages to beat a couple of people who are trying to end his life, really. They're trying to kill him. Yeah, yeah, for a family that just don't really, you know, seem to care about him. Yeah, it's really fucked up when you put it that way, actually. Maybe maybe that, that movie should be banned as well. I'm just going to watch Nightmare Before Christmas again, even though I watched it a few weeks ago. I've forgotten how ridiculously good it is. I can't believe how good I, it is. I, I never watched perfect. it again. Really? Never watched it. Never I, I think it's perfect. It's, it's, it's absolutely in, impeccable. Is it? Flat, you, you it? Yep. Yeah. It is. Patrick Wiggington says, I just want to apologise for Jamie for asking him if he was no longer riled up last time. Yeah, well, you know. He's a big dog, big bear. Masali Mota says, Guys, please address season four of Big Mouth. It cannot go unnoticed. I actually finished it today, this morning. I had life. Yeah, newsflash. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> I don't want to torture James and Ruben um, talking about it right now, but... I think we need to record something over Discord about it, Jim, because it really, it really bothered yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> it really fucking bothered me. But so look out for that. Goat in the blue says thoughts on the comment section being filled with the same two jokes every week. Welcome to YouTube comment sections. Yeah, I mean, yeah, every single I don't know one I always think of is is Fantana's. It's always like Anthony. Look, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. This, but you didn't have to call him a racial slur. I don't know, mm -hmm. whatever it will be. Yeah. Yeah, that's seeped into the jar one even. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's just what happens. It's just the same memes over and over that gradually some of them get too repetitive and just vanish and new ones crop up and well, it's just the one at the moment is just accusing me of saying things that I never said. Yeah, it's like the same one that Ruben's just saying that's on Fantanos. Mm. Yeah, it's just you know, it's just what the YouTube comment section is. I preferred it when it was all about this, you know, this snake. You know, there'll be snakes everywhere. That was a good period in the YouTube comment section. Oh, the hissing one. Yeah, that's a classic. Yes. Random minion XD is one for you, James. Does James yes. still pay for two phone contracts out of laziness? <laughs> 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 Dude, do you actually still? No, I I cancelled. When did you sort that out? Like fucking like two years after it ended. <laughs> after it ended? Yeah, the phone what? contract. Because obviously, when you got phone contract for the phone and like the sim, yeah. it, you pay the set amount to include them both. But when you paid off the phone, it just goes to the sim contract. So I paid off the phone. I just couldn't be asked to cancel the sim part. So I just I just I just had it. But it, remember, I only did that because I couldn't be bothered to transfer the banking apps to my new phone. So I used my old phone for my banking and had to take it around with me everywhere. So I just never cancelled it for that Your reason. Your burner. Yeah, my burner. Yeah, my burner. Yeah, my burner. But I have now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a sensible adult, so I have it on one phone. It's a good idea. Big Boss Man 538 asks this. Here's the scenario. You're all trapped in the jungles of Skull Island from the 2005 King Kong movie. What do you do? Well, someone's got to be a sacrifice. Die. Yeah, just give up. Like, that that insect scene from that movie is horrifying. Yeah, yeah there's no reason to even bother trying when you're in, on an island like that. Yeah, especially because we wouldn't be in a movie. We'd just be in real they, life. They are, yeah, they're choosing to be there to an extent. You know? Yeah. 
I would just be, you know, if I was, I'm staying on the boat. You can go fuck yourself. <laughs> never, never get off the boat. Okay, that's not an option. In this reality, you were born there. <laughs> Well, I'm probably the apex predator in that situation because I was I was born in it, molded by it. <laughs> yeah. No, I'd survive. Did you see Nolan was saying how he doesn't think uh, Tom oh, Hardy's performance really... hasn't been uh, fully oh. appreciated yet in uh, in the Dark Knight? Oh, no, I thought you were going to say about his whole thing about streaming platforms. Oh yeah, he said that like, too. Yeah. He just came up as a real cunt. <laughs> yeah, he's just <laughs> he's all about that, isn't he? The like true film shit, you know. He's, he's such a gatekeeper. He's a typical film gatekeeper. <laughs> yeah, it's just like fucking put your movies on streaming services and let us watch them with subtitles. Accept it. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's the only way to make them like tangible is to have the subtitles on so you can read what the fuck is happening. Well, yeah, that's the other annoying thing. I thought about watching that, but then I was like, Ugh. I can't really relax and watch it on the TV because I'll be turning up and down the fucking volume all the time. I have to watch <laughs> it on my desk of headphones in because the sound will be fucking terrible. Uh, yeah, it's more the, the problem was you couldn't hear the dialogue. Because of that mixing mm -hmm. thing he insists on doing. But yeah, yeah I want to watch bad. it again with just um, bad. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck he's going for with that. And it's become such like a repetitive issue with his movies that just everyone knows mm -hmm. it now. Like who mm -hmm. who normally talks about like mixing, <laughs> audio mixing in movies, you know? No one. <laughs> yeah. But now it's just like a wide known criticism of him. Hmm. Fight me what cunt one. Peace. Has one for us. Um Hi lads. This is my first question slash suggestion, so I hope it isn't too detached or whatever, but hopefully it provides something to dissect. I'm pretty interested in history, and the recent question about the British monarchy inspired me to write this. This was from a question last episode, Ruben, that you missed. I mostly agree okay. with the sentiments of the cast. However, I feel that historically, monarchism has had its purpose. I remember someone in the cast raising concerns about incompetent or immoral people becoming monarchs. And while that did happen, I still think it's important to note that royalty and nobility received a good education and provided the common people with protection against injustice, such as banditry or other crimes by providing a court system. Particularly skilled monarchs would often be able to protect the realm from populism, providing a source of authority at a time when the world was a much more chaotic and dangerous place. This is not to dismiss criticism of monarchism or to voice support. I would say that this is mostly food for thought. I do, however, have a question from this. What are your thoughts on Western models of democracy and republicanism, not to be confused with the American party? I feel as though the cast has voiced concerns occasionally with some of the issues democracy faces, and I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts in a bit more depth. Apologies for the long-winded question, and if it's too political, rock on mingers. Do you want to start with uh, with Ruben and your thoughts on the monarchy? Because we talked about it a little bit last episode. My thoughts on the monarchy? Okay, I guess I'll answer in regards to my thoughts on the monarchy now. Yeah. Um... Obviously, they don't do a great deal, really. There's no, there's no true, <laughs> there's no true like governmental power in the monarchy. I mean, you could speculate based on certain members of the royal family's activities that they've got their fingers in a lot of pies. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to wonder, like, maybe the royal family secretly are trading in intelligence or something. <laughs> That's what they do. Um, I kind they're of like definitely that shady. Idea. There is something very shady about them now, but they're also for for Britain at least because the British royal family seems to be when people talk about the royal family they're talking about the British royal family typically yeah. or the English royal family um, and I'm not sure I, I can't yeah I'm not really sure how far it extends whether they have there are Scottish ones and Welsh ones I don't fuck yeah there are aren't there actually because uh, whatever anyway um, the royal family um, you know no one's thinking about I'm just trying to think of another one does Spain have one are they the kingdom of Spain there are loads of countries in Europe which yeah, are actually officially called the kingdom of you know country yeah. um, but in this country I don't know they they didn't do anything I'm not hugely bothered by them I'm more bothered by people's responses uh, to them and all this pretense around them, the newspapers. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I sort of hate the way, I guess, tabloids latch onto anything, really. It just kind of disgusts me. And one of the things that disgusts me a lot is the way the royal family are treated and discussed in this. I don't know. I mean, it, either they're being crapped on or there's this, there's this reverence like, oh, the queen. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just, it makes my fucking stomach churn. It's one <laughs> of those last bastions of like, this is what being British is. It's liking the queen and being a racist or something, <laughs> you know? No, it's being a pedophile is what the royal family Yeah, actually, last episode I said Prince Harry instead of Prince Andrew. So it it's Andrew that was the one in trouble not, with Epstein. How he's not a nonce. Yeah. Okay, he's, he's starting a podcast. 
<laughs> Maybe we can have him on. <laughs> him and Meghan Markle are doing a podcast. Um, I'm really curious to actually listen to it as well. Yeah, I don't know how much you yeah. want to go into the other part of the question. Thoughts know, on Western man, models tough. of democracy. <laughs> They seem to work understand. better than, like, there, there are no real alternatives that work any better. Yeah, it's definitely preferred. What's that, bro? USSR, that worked. <laughs> Fuck. Is this tanky shit, like, a meme, or...? Yes, it, yeah, I don't believe in, like, communism, Alex, you know that. <laughs> Fuck, okay. <laughs> Bebo, but, babe. Uh, no, okay. to Ruben's thing, Ruben did say there's, like, seven monarchies in Europe. Literally all of North Europe, so, like, Denmark, yeah. uh, Norway, Spain, and then... Uh, Netherlands and the UK. Netherlands? Oh, yeah, of course they actually think I knew that. Yeah, they did, yeah. Yeah, I, I th it was a good um, comment to be left, actually, to bring up the kind of historical relevance and why they were important at a certain time. But it's like, we don't really need that anymore, do we? Kind of advanced a little uh, bit beyond that. I just don't think there needs to be such reverence granted to it in this country because what well, there is for some reason. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, a huge degree of it. Whereas in other countries, they've sort of relaxed about the whole thing. You know, they don't really give a shit, and the, their royal families are just sort of... Like, the, the king of, of Sweden was just like, yeah, the government handled COVID-19 really badly, and I'm very disappointed. <laughs> he just was like, yeah, they're fucking idiots. You would never get that from the queen, really. No. I mean, and if she ever did say anything even slightly like it, it would be, I don't know, very subtle. Mm -hmm. and, or because and she political. has dementia. Or because she has dementia, yeah. <laughs> Fuck. It would be sick if she did, though. What? Why well, dementia? Like, say, no, 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 no. James. <laughs> no, Fuck, it's no. If she just came out and said the English government handled it poorly, I'd just be like, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I'd, that would be, be quite sick. Is, there, is anyone out there fighting and saying the opposite? Man, the UK has yeah, really got this handle. Were, I, I know people who were putting things on Facebook, sort of like poor Boris and things of that sentiment. No, oh, he's I've got no so sympathy for that him. boy. No, he's rubbish. I watched the um, worst fucking government possible for this. I watched a pretty interesting, and I, d I don't normally watch John Oliver, but I watched like a, a YouTube episode that he did on Boris, where he was kind of dismantling his kind of aloof appearance as this kind of str strategy. To come across as more relatable to people even though it's like and he can like bumble his way out of any difficult conversation like he was caught saying some like racist shit or whatever and when the press came to his house to you know try and so get a statement blah, 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 blah. well no his, what, his strategy was he just made like 10 cups of tea took them out on a tray and just kept saying oh i feel very sorry for all of you being out here all day long you must be very tired drink a cup of tea and they kept asking him questions and he, he just kept saying take a cup of tea take a cup of tea and then they like thanked him for a cup of tea and so he just won <laughs> it's, it's incredible yeah no that's that's used by boys boys to like prove that he's good yeah because that the I example mean, I mean, he pulls out tactic but... yeah um because there's, there's like an old picture of um the bullingdon club like assholes with like james cameron um sorry david cameron james cameron fucking... <laughs> james cameron's uh... <laughs> yeah i'm a total uh, fucking... <laughs> yeah david they, cameron and boris are brain. in the same picture but Whereas that very image is, was used to, uh, you know, as a bad thing for, for David, Boris has managed to swing the public image in such a way where he's just this, like, lovable buffoon to so many people. It's a shame he can't be as effective in, you know, in convincing everyone that he's shit and then actually being secretly good. Because yeah. all he's doing is convincing everyone, oh, no, I'm, I'm stupid. And it's like, well... <laughs> I'm yeah. stupid and you can't trust anything I say at any point in time. So, I never know what's going on around me. I'm oh, oh, ever so silly. Yeah. Well, yes. <laughs> what? You're not doing anything to prove the fucking contrary. And there was, a, there was an insane example where in this interview he starts talking about like what his favourite pastime is. And he describes, yes, yeah, so I, I collect crates and then I paint them to look like buses. And everyone looking very jolly on the buses. And... It, there's like a theory that he did that because around the time of like Brexit, there was this really like dodgy campaign bus that he had on that was just had like a plaster of lies all over it. So in the Google results now, when you Google Boris Johnson bus, it's his silly interview talking about painting crates instead of like the actual political behavior oh my god that's dark <laughs> yeah and there's no way to prove it or disprove it because just the way he is you know it's, it's it's pretty hardcore yeah i'd recommend that's watching that it's just on youtube up. it's just john oliver's uh boris video um bebo baby 
asks, Will you boys be getting the vaccine? Why and why not? Also, do you think it will change anything now that they found a new type of COVID in the UK? We addressed this a little bit, but I think we're all a bit young um, to be yeah. even remotely near the the like list of people to get it. You know, we might yeah, get like, it towards I, the end of the year, maybe. I won't be getting the vaccine because I don't mean the country is like prioritizing me. I I would I wouldn't get it for a while because I know that there are other people who I'd be taking their place, and I'm just yeah. like I don't need this. Maybe if uh, any of us has some underlying health condition that would yeah. put us at risk, yeah. but. I don't think any if of I was do. advised by a doctor or something, like you know, you really should actually because you have super duper um, funny condition. Yeah, maybe it's just you know everyone is going to want one, and there are way more vulnerable people than than us on this cast. So. Yeah. Ah, you'll like this, James. Made you look. Nineteen ninety nine says hello, my mingers. I've been catching up with the podcast starting from the very beginning. While I'm at work, my record is eight episodes in one day. By the way, uh, and I a lot, <laughs> yeah, and I just got to the Milka versus Cadbury debate episode. I've never been much of a chocolate fan, but I've never tried Milka before, so I decided to give it a shot. And by golly, James is right. Milka is top tier chocolate. I bought six bars hey. and demolished it in a few days. I don't have a question. Just thought you'd like to know that I'm blaming you for any Milka weight I gain. <laughs> No, I actually I, just wanted to, to comment on this chocolate thing. Um, something that we're very fond of here in our chocolate is it's just a lot of sort of like fat and... Sh well, no, it's fat and sugar in place of cocoa mass. Obviously, chocolate has to have fat and sugar in it. But yeah, cocoa solids just don't seem to be the priority. <laughs> and that's something that I've noticed about the taste of it. Yeah. Um, as I've had more European chocolate now, so probably since whenever we would have last had the great chalky debate. Do you rate Milker above Cadbury then? I Milker isn't the one I've had a great deal of. It's uh, so I, I don't know. Um, it's not really one that I'm drawn to. Like if I was going to buy a bar of chocolate, if I walked into Tesco right now and I was to buy a bar of chocolate, I probably, if I was going to buy any, would end up buying dairy milk um, or Cadbury. Yeah, that's because, that's my point with it, where it's just like the old reliable, you know. Yeah, I guess Milker I'm not crazy for either. But then I don't know. I just don't really, I don't really care for chocolate hugely. Thinking about it. How does it make you feel, Jim, to be betrayed like this? Um, I what's this person's name? Uh, made you look, nineteen ninety nine. Made you look. Wow, yeah, that's not suspicious at all. I think James <laughs> created this account and wrote this. <laughs> can, can you disprove that, James? Um, Milk of Oreo in is objectively better. Exactly, than James is is, Oreo. is attempting a spin campaign. This is some Boris Johnson level this, shit right here from James. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, I, I, I don't. I, 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 uh, All I'm actually, saying maybe if by you... Galaxy. I think Galaxy's pretty tasty. I'll come no, around to that. No, 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 no. Can we all agree that dairy milk is better than Galaxy, please? Yes. Hang on, let me just. I've got a little celebrations tub. Mm. Celebrations are good. Yeah, celebrations, celebrations are, are awesome. good. I think I like Galaxy when I'm also. I've also got the option of like Milky Way as well because I like Milky Way as well. I think Milky Way. I, yeah, I don't think the idea. Galaxy caramel is that good. No, no I don't no, think I, so have either. You have you tried the dark? Because um, obviously there's a like a Dairy Milk had like the dark. Yeah, there, that's like, dark good. Chocolate. I like that. Generally good. So then Galaxy did the same thing and it's shit. It's terrible. Dark Galaxy is not worth. It's possibly the worst chocolate I've ever eaten. <laughs> Woo. No, uh, Hershey's is the absolute. Okay. No, Hershey's sucks. No, no, Hershey no. is the absolute if lowest. You get, chocolate if you get the time. Hershey's bar that's no. like in the three for one pound bit, that's got like cook, like Oreo in it, that's quite good. Yes, yeah, it's, it's better than Milka. No, <laughs> Just don't don't even sit there. Like eat a massive bar. No, don't eat, even sit there. <laughs> no, eat, eat a massive bar of uh, Cadbury in one Why sitting. Why is that too massive? Eat the same because no, that's a part of the point. That's a, point. That's okay, a different measurement, though. The same if you eat the same amount of all of Milka in the same sitting, you would enjoy still the milk feel sick. more. No, can, I put, gross. <laughs> can, can I put forward um, a, a bit of a fresh argument? Mm. A fresh argument. Uh, no yeah, fr arguments. a freshy argument. Um, uh, could the could, James? Yes. Could you tell me um, when you order, say, a Big Mac? Yes. Um, <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake! I know where you're going with this. <laughs> no, when you order a Big Mac, um, yeah. How do you adjust the Big Mac to your liking? <laughs> I take out the flavour. <laughs> Be more specific. <laughs> Sorry. Could, yeah. Okay. So, uh, burger sauce. 
taste terrible. So I remove the burger sauce, then I remove uh, the cheese, <laughs> then I remove the what else is in a big bag? Onions, onion I'll lettuce. Remove the, um... I remove the onion, so it's it's basically burger, bun, lettuce, mayonnaise. Boom. That's a big man. That's grim. <laughs> and in your own words, you remove the flavors. So what you're chasing when you're looking to fill your tummy? No, because that's the is a big, lack big, of big flavor. Big. Is a lack of any sort of um, depth. Sort of um, depth. Any, uh, would you um, like some tea? And, uh, <laughs> order, <laughs> order. I'm removing the salt. Salt is bad. We've gone over this. I, anything that's somewhat how, salty, I don't How is like. onion is salty? Salt. salt don't like it. Onion's the like sharp. Shit. Yeah, onion is like the opposite flavor to. No, onion it is onion. Matter. It doesn't matter yeah. because it doesn't matter because Big Mac Max are the worst thing in McDonald's. Okay, jerk chicken. Okay, what do I move? I actually I only remove the cheese, and you know that. The jerk cheese. Cheese and a jerk chicken? Yeah. It's like a the special, jerk chicken, wrong as it's like is. Breeze, um, special it? burger. It just doesn't seem right to have cheese in it regardless. It's jerk cheese. What does that mean? Jerk cheese. It's like just such an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but I just removed the cheese because I'm not a cheese person. I've gone <laughs> over this. I still have the jerk. It's not like I take out the flavor. That was genuinely funny, Alex. Thanks, bro. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Go on, I actually shit my pants. <laughs> Ruben shit his pants. Shit it. I shit them. He shit like it. Toffee. How do you feel about toffee? Oh, toffee? More like tofufi, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, zing, I mean, wing, zing, zing. Uh, tofufi, Shut yeah, up. that's pretty good. I like coffee. Jesus, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was actually reading about that because I'd forgotten what the context was of that. Yeah, what? Coffee. It was Corvette, wasn't it? He was meant to be trying to say. Oh, what was it? It was something stupid. No, it was, um... <laughs> it's surely it is supposed to be coffee. No, no it, it so. was just despite no. the constant negative press. <laughs> coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and then he deleted it six hours later and said it was intentional. <laughs> <laughs> Why so, did you tweet that, James? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So what, it does actually mean coffee, because I, I now call coffee coffee. No, yeah, there's nothing to do with coffee. Well, yeah. it now is. It's now my thing. <laughs> You've adapted it. Fuck Trump, it's my thing. Uh, let's do two more then. This penultimate one is for Jim and Ruben from Wazian Boy 42 Is it about Dark Souls 2? No, but it is about... All right. Damn. Good. Something, I was going to uh, shout answer and actually about Dark Souls 2. <laughs> it is about another series you like, though. What are Jim and Ruben's thoughts on the casting of Oscar Isaac as Solid Snake in the upcoming Metal Gear Solid movie? And I'm going to add, how do you just generally feel about this project? No, um, can I just know. wait one second? They're I'm making a good actor. They're making a Monster Hunter movie based off the Monster Hunter mission in Metal Gear Solid. Are you sure this isn't a Metal Gear Solid what? Monster Hunter movie? <laughs> I, mean? I watched the trailer for that earlier. It's it's fucking bizarre. What it's like be based off the. No, because no, there, there was a Monster Hunter mission. No, in, I know, no, but solid. in Peace Walker. But like, yeah. what, what do you mean the movie is based off that? Well, because it's the not like a Monster Hunter movie, is movie, it? No, it's a, it's, a, it's a Metal Gear Solid Monster Hunter movie. <laughs> what do you, what, <laughs> no, what he uh, means is like, it's, like it's like a bunch of armed military guns people. and shit in the desert. Yeah, because like, <laughs> like a portal yeah. opens and a real squad, oh, right. like a that's real not, military squad. That's not Monster through. Hunter at all. Like, that's the thing. No, that's yeah, that's Monster just like a really that's sad, kind of like focus that. testy way of getting Monster Hunter into the... I don't know, cinemas. it kind of seems like um, that that mission in Peace Walker, Metal Gear Peace Walker, I mean. But the, the main character is Resident Evil. Yeah, so there's going to be a three-way crossover. Oh, okay, maybe I can... How can she, how can that be, it? because then they'd have to play, she'd have to play two characters. <laughs> no, it's the same person, that's the reveal. Anyway, um, Oscar Isaac, yeah, he's a good actor, um, and he definitely looks the part, in my opinion. I don't know what he's going to do voice-wise. Honestly, I'm kind of excited for this film. What's Not convinced in the, you? Like, uh, nothing. I just think if someone can be truly faithful to Metal Gear and make like a stupid just live action anime movie, it could be fun as fuck. Yeah, I think that's what it, ne it needs to be stylish as fuck. I don't know how yeah, it, it has yeah. to be directed like Asian cinema where it's like stupid frenetic and everything. But I didn't realize oh, that. Will it be? Yeah, that's no. the thing. Because the director is the same guy who did Kong Skull Island, but I, he is like a huge Metal Gear fan and mm. he's in Death Stranding, isn't he? The thing is, they had like 3D models made of these directors and shit, but they're voiced by different people. But is that not just a sign of good faith? 
inherently though, yeah, including I guess. him. Yeah, no, I was gonna say, um, yeah, that that does prove some sort of like relationship between him and Kojima, and I think Kojima should be like talk to when it comes to this film yeah i just googled it he is in death stranding so i i think it's going to be a real challenge to adapt that into a movie mm -hmm. it's going to be really fucking hard all it has to be is self-aware and then rick and morty like, can it, show up look morty yeah, it's fucking metal yeah. gear they can do a rick and morty like death stranding advo or something <laughs> it's not going to be good Fuck you. Next question. <laughs> Let's end on this one, and I do have to preface, it is, it is genuinely a serious one. Um, uh, well, shit. Uh, but oh, I don't know. No. I, I don't know. It, it's a good one to end on, I think, for that sake. But I, I also felt like reading through it, it would be worth bringing up. Anyway. Jar Side of the Moon says this. Hey, Mingers, serious one here. So I have a friend, let's call him Yawn, Scringin, who I've been friends with for about seven or eight years. He's watched Jar since the old channel and I think has watched every episode. He introduced me to Jar around episode 101 and is almost a religious watcher of the show. Whenever we see each other in school, we're in year 11, we say, all right, Doug, based off the nostalgia critic and we live and breathe Jar media references. Recently, he's been going through a pretty tough time. He doesn't know why he's so upset, though I do have my own suspicions. He's been cutting himself for a few months now, and it's really quite upsetting to see the scars all up and down his arm. He often jokes about suicide, and the thought that one day I could wake up to a phone call saying that he took his own life is a feeling that there are no words for. I know there's nothing I could say to help Yorn, but I know that if he does kill himself, I'll feel not only overwhelming sadness, but guilt as well. Any advice for me and him would mean so much. Because although you're just a bunch of mingers who make fart jokes and tell us about your shart stories and the times you fuck bananas, you do provide some handy advice every now and then. Game on. Yeah. So it's pretty fucking heavy, obviously, but I don't know. If it, if he's like been listening, it might mean something to hear someone's perspective on their thoughts. Yeah, on it. I, I think the key with any mental health stuff is like see a professional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, really, it can always get, you know, you don't want it to get worse. It can easily spiral and, if you let it, you know? Yeah, if it's unchecked, then it is no, it does normally go in like a downward direction. And it is, I do feel really bad for especially all the people around that age, like this year. Like it is it's just mm. really fucked for anything like social and school and everything and having to work and learn from home it's just it's really fucked and thrown a lot of things off place and you're already so like hormonal and it's a bit it's a bit much to deal with for you know for everyone let alone the younger people so jim's right though it is about talking to people and getting help professional help if you can and, yeah and communicating your thoughts to someone and trying to not bottle it up inside yeah obviously if you, if you can't get professional help then you should probably talk to people not even necessarily about it just to make sure you are talking to people mm -hmm. yeah james do you have any thoughts well it's 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 very difficult to uh, give advice like this when you don't know the exact situation yeah. the person's in to yeah to, to understand like i've been through it i knew what would work for me but i don't know other people what's what's going on with them but it's like you need to set your small goals it's like i know self-harm it is it, it's horribly destructive but it's just like if you work on s trying to slowly get off that then that's like a stepping stone to getting better it's just one thing one small thing you can focus your mind on that can just put you in a better position to help long term but it's, it's just about taking things slow doing what you can and talking to people close to you and trying to get yourself into a better a better position it does take like your own mental strength i don't know it's difficult to say that you need to like work on your own mental strength to, to help overcome it so you need to change the way you perceive things and the way you react to things but just by doing things slowly step at a time it can get better but you just have to talk about it yeah and it is one of those things where it's like easier said than done you know yeah no, that's that's the main thing because it is horribly difficult to, to, to like overcome it just takes time and you've got to understand that process you've got to know that it's going to be long term if you you when you want to overcome it you have to take things very soon you've just got to stay committed and to get yourself back up when you do go lower to then you know improve gradually it just takes times so you have to like get ready for that yeah it's a lot I know that sounds quite that sounds negative but that's there's just the, the realistic bit of it it just takes time but once if you want to get better 
then that will help you get better by just having these small steps that you can build up to. Yeah, so my heart goes out to to him, so and good luck. You can do it. And that's it guys, that's episode twenty one of And I guess Call you can on. expect a few more since the lockdown is infinite <laughs> Yeah <laughs> in its breadth. You know, by the time Halo Infinite comes out, probably still be locked down. Fuck. If it ever does fucking come out. Any last words? Any last thoughts, anyone? Uh, next episode out? is a Halo Infinite uh, episode. It's a Halo follower it's episode. A, yeah, we're going to have episode. Halo follower on and we're going to do our predictions. Oh, next episode is, like, I guess it coincides with Christmas, whatever. It's the closest one. Yeah, right. It is right? the closest one. Well, actually, I think they're both equally distant. Yeah, in, yeah, I think you're yeah. right. Um, pretty much, yeah. Well, actually, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday versus Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday. Okay, no. I guess, no, uh, yeah, the next one will be the closest to Christmas. It will be after. So, I don't know. We might, which, we, will we come up with something? Maybe we'll come up with something. If we're going to stream, we're going to do a special Christmas video of us watching Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. <laughs> <laughs> What's 9 plus 10? 19. Thanks for listening. Uh... Okay, then. I'm playing Titanfall. Goodbye. Don't oh, be a okay. child. I can't believe he just did that. <laughs> I can't believe he's gone. At least we can talk shit about him like we usually do. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Wow. <laughs>